Hey everyone, welcome to another artwork analysis. Now, I stumbled upon this artist. Um, I don't know how it took me this long to find him because apparently he's pretty popular. Um, and that's Ilya Kushinov. Now, pardon me if I messed up his name, uh, but his work has a very fresh look to it. And he draws a lot of uh, women, but they're really fundamentally strong. Um, I've even seen and checked out his older work before he got into the girl drawing binge that he did that got him really popular. But beforehand, it, he still showed a lot of great things when it comes to his art fundamentals. And it's no wonder that uh, when he transitioned to drawing girls, that everything kind, kind of works well together. So I want to analyze this piece partially because uh, it is near Automata and everyone knows how much I love that game. But also because a lot of times the colors tend to deceive just how much he knows when it comes to fundamentals. And choosing a piece that is seemingly gray kind of strips it down and lets it easier to hang out, if that makes sense. Anyways, first I want to talk about the idea of painting with grays, uh, which coincides with the second point, which is about values and the whole idea of three value compositions again. Um, but it's really important to iterate again. Uh, number three, I want to talk about movement and how he uses the, um, the uh, body and the environment in order to create a really nice compositional movement. So number one, I really want to go get into painting with grays. Now, this piece is deceptive because obviously it's not a colorful piece, but there is color in it. And a lot of people do kind of misunderstand what it means to have a gray painting. Um, so when you're doing traditional painting, a lot of times the chaotic nature of brushes and such, they will always uh, create a little bit of variance to their colors. And I've talked about color variance uh, numerous times. But it also works for grays. If you get gray paint from a tube, I guarantee you, you will have a slight temperature shift with their, with the grays. So it's no exception here. So even though this piece is seemingly gray, there are cool and warm grays going on. Um, so I want to just really quickly show you what I mean by eye dropping the different grays here. So you see how even going through the clouds here, there's a yellowish gray. This is more of a warm gray. So very slight variations, but because it's a very gray painting, even a slight amount of saturation will shift the temperature of it and make something more interesting. Now this is um, very, this is a very obvious uh, way to show it. See how this gray has 3% saturation of blue. Um, I am going to actually make it even more obvious by painting a pure gray patch. Now, it might be hard to see depending on your monitor, but you might immediately notice right from the comparison uh, of my grays that I just painted uh, randomly, that the grays over in the clouds have a really cool uh, greenish tint to it. And the hair has a warm-ish, actually the whole face rather. Her face is more warm and it it's very subtle, but it makes a huge difference because again, when you're painting traditionally, the grays will never be 0% consistent throughout the entire piece. There's going to be variance um, and having slight temperature shifts when you are doing grayscale paintings will make a huge difference to the perception of it. And it, 
again, it's not obvious, but those little things always helps. Now, of course, he probably used a lot of these Photoshop filters and other things to create it, but same idea. You use whatever tools are at your disposal in order to create and really execute the art fundamentals that you know about. So you see here as well, there's slight variations of grays and magentas here in order to create some variance. Um, so it goes back into a point that I talked about uh, in previous videos where you can create neutral colors through complementary colors. So in this case, greens and magentas are complementary and from far away, we our eyes kind of wiggle and create this that create the sense that it is gray. But if we zoom in, we start to see the nuances. So we see a bit of magentas here. I'm going to circle that here as well, magentas. But they're kind of wiggling in our eyes and creating a sense of movement. Now, uh, of gray movement rather. Now, uh, there is actually a really quick way of doing it. I'm going to actually teach you really quickly now. So if you were to duplicate the painting, move it uh, off a little bit. Um, actually, no, let's, let's start over. Duplicate the layer, double click on the layer, and you start to see the blending, blending options. Now you could choose to turn off some of these channels in order to create a certain feel. Now I turned off the reds and blues, and now you can see if I move it uh, with my cursor here, that you can actually very quickly create complementary colors through your, your piece. It's very cheap. I'm gonna make it super obvious here. So you're turning off um, the reds and blues to create the magentas and greens. And of course, you can always turn on and off whatever you want, but it creates this nice effect here. It's very cheap. Um, definitely don't abuse it because it can get really bad if you do, a very obvious. But if you just use it very in a very subtle way, you can create the variance that a lot of traditional paints have that digital cannot. Um, so I'm going to turn this off to get you out of there. Now I want to briefly talk about values and movement as well because I've talked about those topics uh, before. So again, when it comes to values, you really want to zoom out from the piece to really get a sense of where all the movements are. So even in a piece like this, Ilya really keeps it within three values. And of course, um, because he's doing fan art, he's limited by the, uh, the character's design. So, um, but either way, he uses it to his disposal. You can see here, the darks are beautiful, creates a really nice movement over here. Um, and of course, the focal point on the head with the blindfold. Now the mid-tones, you can see are right on the head. Now, it, because an exception to um, the rest of the piece, it immediately catches attention. Same with the pod here, same with the background here. Really nice movement going on here with mid-tones. Um, I, I kind of graffitied all over it, but kind of get my point, right? And then of course the white, don't really need to draw it, rest of the piece. Really nice. Um, there's make sure your values are always interconnected. Um, so again, the mid-tones create a nice movement. The, oh, let's even draw it like that. The mid-tones are there, it's pink. I'm gonna use blue for darks, like that. And of course, everything else encompassing it would be the whites. Really nice movement. Um, and it gets you to look everywhere um, throughout the canvas. Now, of course, if you're having trouble with this, get into a habit of drawing with grays first. Don't really add colors until you really understand values. Now, number three is movement, but I really just talked about it. Make sure that your value movements and such um, are making your, uh, your, your audience look throughout the piece. Now, again, of course, when you're drawing certain subject matter, you're you're kind of locked into what you can use values for. So obviously, in this case, uh, Ilya had to draw 2B. So the character design had to kind of, she has to wear a darker um, dress because 
of her character. Now, of course, you use this to your advantage, so you have to plan the environment, which are the rocks here, to complement with the with uh, 2B over here. So either way, when you're doing fan art, make sure you understand the character thoroughly and really plan for the design. And I, it's all it always comes down to grayscale. Trust me, a piece like this is fantastic to study because there are no colors to distract you from the uh, the fundamentals of this piece the foundation anyways thank you for watching i'll see you next time